So starting with the, the first part of uh, linear regression, imagine that we have a simple regression model with no covariates, so the, the common y equal to alpha plus beta s, and we are interested in the slip effect, so in the, in the beta. And in R, the most straightforward way is to use uh, LM function in a loop. So how would we do that? Uh, in the first slide, I show how did we simulate the data and how uh, are we calculating the speed. So uh, first, I simulate the uh, n individuals. So I set um, so called mini G was with 10,000 individuals and m 10,000 SNPs, and I simulate my SNP matrix, simulate my uh, vector of uh, response. Here, I want to measure time. I pre-specify my vector of uh, betas, and then in a loop for each SNP at the time, I fit the LM model, and I save my beta uh, in a vector. And then we measure the speed, and that was uh, one megasip. So for 10,000 individuals and one million of SNPs, we would need around three hours on my computer, and it's, it, it's, uh, you can keep this uh, number of three hours uh, when I will compare it uh, in a moment to our proposal. Another thing that uh, you, we can do is uh, change the function in a loop. So we, instead of LM, we can use Alice fit, fitting a least squares model. So everything stays the same. I'm not showing here anymore how we simulate the data. So I pre-specify my vector, and uh, here the story goes the same way, just I'm fitting the LS fit uh, function. And we see already that we improved the speed uh, to almost seven megasips. So just by simply replacing one function by the other, we can uh, hugely uh, speed up the computations. Um, and now, uh, for a simple regression model, we know that uh, the explicit solution for the beta is very simple. And we can actually compute it ourselves uh, without using any ready function to, to fit the linear regression model. So here I do the same story, just in a loop, snip, one snip at a time. I'm just uh, calculating my um, beta uh, myself. So before the loop, I centered uh, response because that stays the same. And here in the loop, I center one snip at a time, and I solve the, uh, the model, and I measured the speed of uh, 45 megasips, which is already another improvement. And now comes the idea of semi-parallel computations. So in the formula uh, on the previous slide, we've seen that what is actually happening is that uh, we have to center our vector of response, uh, y, and uh, uh, center our SNP. And then what's happening is that the, the y part, the, the response stays the same, so I'm only changing my SNP. And uh, wh what is actually happening is only simple uh, multiplication and summation. So imagine that we want to take a, a block of SNPs. I take k SNPs at one time. And uh, the, this operation of the beta can be done using matrix operations. So if I multiply transpose vector of y's with the, the whole matrix matrix of the centered uh, SNPs, I can uh, get my whole vector of betas in the, uh, using one matrix uh, multiplication. And that's what we call semi-parallel regression. So we also get many betas in parallel, but on the same computer using the same uh, R session. So. Uh, that is the idea, and now we have to see how it works uh, in R. So uh, the easiest way would be to, uh, to use function scale. So we first uh, center our uh, vector of response, and here we center the, um, the SNP matrix at once using function scale. And here I calculate uh, the denominator, so column by column, uh, sum of uh, squares. And the operation of uh, transpose uh, y with uh, centered uh, SNP is uh, done using cross product function. And then we see that I achieved a speed of 32 megasip. 
which is actually slower than uh, doing the explicit solution in a loop, which we saw previously. So that is a little bit disappointing, but that is also suggesting that clearly a slowing down part is function scale. So what we wanted to do, we wanted to avoid that function. So in the next step, we center the SNP matrix uh, ourselves. So we, uh, we just subtracted the averages column by column uh, using the outer function. And here we calculated the betas and uh, the speed uh, increased to 130 megasips. But looking uh, further in the details, we saw that uh, centering is of the SNP matrix is actually not necessary at all because you see in the numerator you only have to center uh, Y and SNP stays uh, in the original uh, version and in the uh, denominator we also don't need to center SNP, we only need the averages. So here uh, you see that the most efficient uh, way to compute the semi-parallel simple regression uh, in R and the speed uh, was uh, 220 megasips and now uh, that means that for 10,000 individuals, 1 million of SNPs, I would need only a minute uh, to do such a GWAS and now compare it to the three hours that I mentioned on uh, one of my first slides using a standard procedure. So the, the speed up is enormous but I'm also a little bit unrealistic uh, so far because I'm, I'm only talking about the simple re uh, linear regression model and normally in practice you will correct your models for uh, many covariates and when we want to correct for population stratification and uh, we use principal components in the model a number of covariates will uh, grow to uh, even 30 uh, perhaps uh, and it's very easy to add covariates in the LM or LSPID function but it will also of course affect the, the speed of the computation so here we uh, we checked uh, how covariates are affecting the speed so for example here for one uh, covariate the speed of 0.9 megasip dropped to 0.3 megasips for uh, 30 covariates so we want to deal with covariates in our semi-parallel computations in an efficient way uh, not to spoil our achievements from the simple regression. Um, so what we do here, we introduce the new variables, a new SNP variable, S star, and new response, Y star. And here you see uh, the formula for uh, those transform variables. And although at the beginning they may look uh, complicated, uh, but they are actually based on uh, projections. So we just leave the, the parts of the variables that are orthogonal to the space uh, bent by a vector of uh, by the columns of uh, uh, X matrix and then we can show mathematically that the beta that we are interested in uh, is a solution of a new model it's the uh, regression through the origin and now the, the, the solution for the beta is even simpler because no uh, centering is involved so in R, uh, here I again show how do we simulate the data. I simulated 30 covariates and then the um, X is the covariance matrix and we uh, assume that we uh, include intercept of course in the uh, covariance matrix and here I transform the, the vector of uh, in response and we have to be careful when you we do this data transformation because if you just multiply matrix one by one as they are in the formula on the slide before uh, it will be very inefficient and you also may run into memory problems when you multiply n times n matrix so here we show how to do those uh, transformation in the quickest and efficient way and here we, uh, we transform the SNP matrix and know that everything goes in a semi-parallel way so I transform all the SNP matrix at once also and here I compute the, the vector of uh, betas. Also, uh, so far I haven't mentioned anything about standard errors and the p-values, and the p-values are actually the, the vital point of GWAS studies. Uh, so once we have this uh, transform model, 
uh, with no intercept, it is very easy to calculate the standard error of the beta, and we already see that it will be very easy to semi-parallelize the computations. We also have to try, um, compute the, the variance of the measurement error. And here we should remember that although uh, we have uh, regression through the origin, our original model included uh, intercept and k covariates, so we should correct for the correct number of degrees of freedom. However, assuming that the n is very large, it won't have much influence on the final result. And we see that the residual sum of squares uh, is also computed very easily using ba basic matrix operation, and it's very easy to semi-parallelize it. So here we see how do we do that in R. Actually, every operation needs only one line of a simple code. And here I calculate the p-values based on the normal distribution, and we take the lower tail uh, to avoid uh, numerical precision uh, errors for the very small p-values. And in the table, you can uh, see the final speed comparisons. So we see that uh, LS feed function is indeed faster than uh, LM. However, the, the computational benefits uh, start to disappear once the number of covariates is increasing, and our semi-parallel regression is working uh, 40, 50, 60 times uh, faster. And uh, now we can do the, the GWAS for 1 million SNPs with 10 covariates within uh, 5 minutes, and that's already for uh, beta standard errors and the p-values. Uh, I want to mention uh, a little bit the missing data. so. Once you have missing response, it's not a problem because that means that the whole individual is just removed from the uh, analysis. Uh, but missing SNPs are more difficult to handle uh, because, in principle, you, are, you can't have any NA in the SNP uh, matrix because once you have any NA, the cro cross product will return the uh, NA value for that uh, beta. So our solution to that was to impute the missing genotypes with just uh, the average of the available genotypes. And we did a uh, small simulation experiment uh, that for a, a reasonable sample size for GWAS, then, uh, around 1,000 individuals and a missing miss rate of 5%. It works very well, so here we see our p-values and they are almost exact. And above that missing mess rate, the SNPs are deleted from the analysis anyway. And uh, in general, we don't see missing data uh, a big uh, issue because nowadays the whole idea is to analyze the big SNP data which are imputed, and there we don't have any missing genotypes. Uh, so uh, that was the linear regression. We showed how to semi parallelize in an exact way. Uh, and now I will discuss the logistic regression. 